mark, now word that the UN cannot even get enough humanitarian aid distributed properly in opposition strongholds. And then there's Mali and the ongoing French fight against a resurgent Al-Qaeda franchise. So what is the world to do about all of this? We turn for answers to my exclusive guest, the French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius, key member of the UN Security Council, which often seems caught like a deer in the headlights of disaster and often unable to forge solutions. So with that, Mr. Minister, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be with you. Let me go straight to North Korea, which you and your Security Council partners are having to deal with. Do you believe that this is rhetoric now, these uh, increasing belligerent threats coming out of the North, or are you worried that it might happen? We are worried because uh, with North Korea, nobody uh, never knows. And uh, we have to be very serious about it and to take sanctions and uh, to say to North Korea that uh, we cannot accept uh, uh, its behavior. No, we have to take it very seriously. So, Mr. Fabius, how do you actually resolve this? Because there are sanctions and then more sanctions and more sanctions, and that triggers North Korean outbursts, but it also doesn't affect their ability to keep building their nuclear program. What is the solution when it comes to North Korea? Well, I think we must have a very uh, acute uh, talks with uh, uh, China in particular, because uh, you know the influence that China can have on uh, North Korea. It's not only a, the, a question of China, but uh, they, uh, are, they can be active I I in the solution, and we have to consult with them very closely, not only them, Russian as well, and the different members of the Security Council, but we have to explain uh, very uh, directly to, to North Korea that it is serious this time and that we don't uh, accept them uh, to go on on their uh, foolish behavior. So which brings me to Syria because we do seem to see uh, so many differences within the Security Council that it's hard to have a, a straight policy. We've talked many times about what the solution is in Syria, but now the shocking news that the United Nations can't even get enough food and medicine, basic humanitarian aid, forget about ending the fight, to the opposition because of playing by the rules, which means you have to go through the Bashar Assad government. Is this not, Mr. Foreign Minister, a clear-cut case for a safe area? Surely Syria needs a safe area now in order simply to have basic humanitarian aid for the opposition. Uh, it is uh, clear that it is a real uh, humanitarian catastrophe, I mean it, a bloodshed, uh, not only in Syria, but also in uh, the surrounding countries, uh, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, and so on. And therefore, we have to act on many, many um, issues at the same time, humanitarian aspect, political aspect, and uh, embargo on weapons as well, because uh, the question is now very, very serious. We cannot accept to have an imbalance between uh, the Bashar al-Assad side, which is supported by Iran and Russia, and the other side with a national coalition, uh, which uh, has no um, real weapons or no sufficient weapons. But uh, coming back to your question, uh, we must uh, and we can uh, have the means in order to be sure that the humanitarian aid is brought to, to the provinces uh, themselves. Because uh, uh, for the time being, sometimes it is brought to the Bashar al-Assad regime, which uh, really uh, doesn't make sense. Let me move on to Mali, where your forces are in full combat with the Al-Qaeda franchise there. Are you making progress? Will French forces be out on your deadline of, of April? Yes, we are making progress. Uh, we must remember, you must remember, that uh, we decided to intervene because otherwise uh, Malian state would have become a terrorist state. Now, we have intervened with uh, our uh, troops and, and uh, other African troops, and uh, now the towns are recovered, okay? Uh, we are in the northern part of Mali, and we have destroyed a lot of terrorist groups, and that's a good job. And uh, we have still uh, some uh, 
progress to, to do. But I mean, on the military side, I think we are uh, really uh, performing very well. But, but, because there is a but, uh, we must at the same time make progress on the democratic side. And it belongs to the Malian state uh, who uh, has to uh, determine a dialogue between the north and the south. And at the same time, it is a third aspect, we must insist on the development side. But uh, what has been done up to now in Mali is, uh, is a very good job. And when can you confirm or not that one of the leading guys, Bel Mokhtar and his cohorts, were actually among the dead? Do you believe that they are dead? Uh, we are right now uh, having tests, uh, DNA, uh, in order to, to know uh, who is who. Obviously, it's very difficult because the bodies are uh, spilled over and, uh, you know, it's very hot in, in this season in, in Mali and therefore the bodies are nearly destroyed. But uh, so far as Abu Zayed, Abu Zayed is one of the leaders, uh, is concerned, it's very likely that he has been killed. For the other guys, uh, it's not very clear. And finally, the former French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, said just this last week that the main rule is you don't go into a country which doesn't have a government. How do you react to his criticism of what your government has done in Mali? The best reaction is a reaction of uh, all the African countries. Uh, when uh, France has decided to intervene, uh, thanks to a decision of President Hollande, uh, all of them, I mean all of them, have applauded. And now uh, we have uh, international support throughout uh, the Security Council. Uh, I think it's the best answer that very calmly one can bring. And what do you make of his saying that he might be forced to come back into public life sort of to save France? How do you say when you are a diplomat? No comment. <laughs> Foreign Minister Fabius, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And when we come back, we'll examine...